Hello everyone. So, I was inspired by some LoRa models and doing dynamic camera motions, like this kind of demo here. I tried out a few methods, both without LoRa and with LoRa, to test if we could do something like a camera push-in, or what we call the crash-in camera LoRa. I recently found out about a pretty cool motion LoRa for push-in cameras, which you'll see is like this. It happened on the Hugging Face page where you can use image to video and apply this LoRa with the trigger word push in camera to create camera pan in and push in motions like this. I also found a previous release of a LoRa that has similar features, the crash in LoRa from Remade AI. They made a crash zoom in LoRa, which is also used for image to video. Both have similarities, but this time I'm going to try out the push in LoRa more because it's something new. I'm also using similar features like this for pushing out, like this example. Then, I created 20 second videos with dynamic motions where I combined multi camera motions, like what they called camera push in and push out. In this example, before I found out about the LoRa model, I used the first and last frame method with Wan 2.1 vase to create different camera motions. The smoothest first and last frame result is this one, where I combined push-ins and push-outs in a single video generation. In the middle, there's a little pause, then the camera pushes out, and the character starts walking. Kind of cool, right? So, let's check out the pros and cons of using just LoRa with image to video versus using multiple images like what I did here. I've got a start frame and an end frame in this three second clip. Then I started doing camera panning with different angles. Obviously, this is using flux context to generate such images. And then we zoom out again in the last part of the video where you see it going back to the first image frame we had at the beginning. Same image here. Then I let the character move freely in whichever direction she wants in the last five seconds. All right, so first, we're going to try out the crash zoom in LoRa and also the push in LoRa. Right now, I've got the crash zoom in LoRa, which is an image to video LoRa model. You can check it out on the Remade AI Hugging Face page. It's the crash in one like this. I'm going to use something similar here with a similar distance of the character and do a zoom in effect with similar text prompts. Let's say I have a text prompt and I'm going to use another video for this example. I'm going to use this character image here. It's a similar distance to the examples here, where you see a middle shot of the character and then a close up shot of her face. What I'll do here is add the crash zoom in effect, rapidly zooming into the woman's face as she turns with a relaxed expression and sunlight on her face. We'll look at that in our upcoming generated result. Okay, so after a few tries with generations, I got something better with this Laura. Right now, we're using this LoRa generated image to video. I tried a few times with the distilled LoRa, the Light 2V, and there's an image to video Light X2V CFG distilled LoRa, which we can use for lower sampling steps. But when I tried this one, it didn't give good results, so I turned that off and just used the crash zoom in LoRa to make it work. At least we got a normal character remaining even as the camera zoomed in, though there were some funky movements of the character that I couldn't control. As I always say, using just a single image to video method like this feels like gambling. You know, you're just relying on text prompts and hoping you get the results you want through random seed numbers and text prompts. This isn't ideal if we want to generate controllable motion videos. So, is it a gimmick? You guys can judge. Now let's try another one. The new push in camera view LoRa model. I'll give it a shot with the same text prompts and the same image for testing. Here. I've got the lavender image they used for the demo, and I'm using exactly the same text prompts they used to generate their result. Let's test this one and see how it goes. So far, I've tested the push in LoRa and the crash zoom in LoRa a few times, and both are able to generate some motion using the image to video generation method. But as I said, it feels uncontrollable when using just one single image to video motion. Meanwhile, we've been playing around with longer video lengths recently, and I've tried something that's going to be more controllable for our camera motions and keep the character objects still. I'll demonstrate that in the next example. While we wait for this one to finish generating, let's see. This 30-step process is almost going to take about 2 minutes to complete. The last one I generated took 2 minutes and 25 seconds. 
Let's see what it does with the new motion push in LoRa and how that works. Okay, so we just finished generating, spending 2 minutes and 27 seconds here. The generated result shows it can do the push in camera motion with this image, but again, the whole video scene, you can't really control all the elements, like the trees, or how the road in this lavender footage looks. Also, at the end of the video, as you can see in the last few seconds, it suddenly pops up with something that looks like car traffic. It's kind of blurry because this is a LoRa for fast motion push-ins, showing the speed of the camera moving into that area. But again, just like this, I'm not really a big fan of using just one single image to video generation, even though, yes, I can make the length longer here, it's still not able to maintain the whole video quality. I've tried another way to do this by using the flux context. With the workflow I showed in a previous tutorial, using the first and last frames with flux and WAN 2.1, I set the start and end frames. One frame is generated originally in flux, and the last frame is generated using flux context, creating a zoom out like motion between the first and last frames. This gives me better control over styles. As you can see, this character walking on the beach is the same image I used in the first example for the crash zoom in LoRa. Here, I'm using very basic flux context, even flux turbo LoRa, and it works well. We're able to use low sampling steps to generate faster for flux context, which is great for demonstrations and prototyping. This is pretty good to use. Here, I'm having this as the first frame a close-up shot of the character standing on the beach with a sea view and giving a V sign with her hand. Then, I made a far shot of the scene with a drone camera view looking down from the sky, where the woman is wearing a blue dress this time. Okay, so I changed the resized image in this second part for the video generation, directly connecting the first image and the second image from the flux context generation. As you can see here, we're able to create something in this first group of flux context, and then we bring it to the next step for video generation. Therefore, I'm going to enable this step-by-step -step process to make it easier for you guys to understand how the data flows in the workflow. Here, I'm not using any crash zoom in LoRa or push in camera LoRa model. Instead, I'm just using Juan Video's Fusion XVase, along with the Detail Enhancer and Realism Boost. It's a typical way of using Juan Video Vise settings here. What I'm going to do is run this again so you guys can see how it processes. The first step is going to process the flux context because I set this to random seed numbers. It will try to cherry pick which one works better for the flux context image. In this case, we're going to use this image for our last frame in the video generation. Here, we're starting with the text encoder and it's going into the K sampler for our generation. Okay, so we finished our sampling steps here, and now it's jumping into the video output. I've capped the previous generations of this workflow here. Here's the second video generation where I used the, the blue dress as the frames. As you can see, using the start and end frames is really good. Lately, I've become addicted to using the start and end frames node for masking and controlling the image frames. You can even have multiple images for the start frames just like how I did for the long length video. That logic can be applied with just one custom node. By using these custom nodes and the native nodes in ComfyUI with WANBase, we can create pretty good combinations of whatever we want to do. Basically, it's more controllable with this method, which I personally think is better. Like the previous videos you guys saw using the crash zoom in LoRa or the camera push in LoRa, you'll end up with something where you can't control the end frames, how the characters act, or how the other objects look. Now this is the drawback of simple image to video that we have to realize. Even if the LoRa models are trained well or produce fancy camera control effects, they're just not able to control how the character's motions will turn out. Even with the zoom in effect working in this video, compared to what I did with the start and end frames using one video vase, I didn't even need any LoRa to help me with the camera zoom in, zoom out, or what they call push in and push out camera motions. The whole thing is very steady. All the objects stay put, and there's even a bench on the beach this time. Last time, we didn't have something like this. It was just the woman in a bikini walking on the beach. Still, we're able to have very steady motions of the character or any object, and we can control them rather than having the video like what I generated previously here, where the AI does whatever it wants with funky character movements. That's the drawback of image to video. It's just gambling. Meanwhile, here, 
we can control different kinds of motions using WAN video vase. Now this isn't about debating which LoRa models or diffusion models you're going to use, but since we have flux context, we're able to control different start and end frames using flux context to generate images specifically for motion scenes. This way, we can be even more precise with how we perform our video generation. This is one direction where you have, say, three or five seconds, and that length is able to consume one camera motion like this. Meanwhile, I've done a longer video length at the beginning of this tutorial where we did a 20 second clip like this with the camera pushing in and some weird walking motions. I don't like this one either, but it's just for demo purposes to show the camera motions pushing out again and the character walking, or like the first demo here, the 12 second clip where you see the push in camera is very precise and steady, allowing you to see a very clear face of the character throughout those few seconds. Then we have the camera push out again and allow the character to walk or do something else based on the text prompts you instruct the AI to do in the last five or three seconds. By doing this, we're adding more sampling steps rather than just having one first and last frame. I did another one like this, which I talked about in previous videos, using long lengths with three sampling steps. I applied this for Chatterbox, integrating with Multitalk, and then use this three sampling steps method to generate 15 seconds for the multi-talking avatar video. The same concept applies here because Flux and WAN video vase are very flexible, allowing us to have different combinations. As I always mention, with control videos, control masks, and reference images, you've already got a lot to play around with using just these three input parameters. Combining that with the WAN vase start to end frames you can play around with the start and end images. You've got a lot of creativity to explore here. Here, I have two reference images for the start and end frames, just the same concept as what I showed using two images. For example, this is the image I used for the first demo here, where the urban city street has the young woman and the camera zooms in like this. I used this workflow to create such motion effects. We have two images here. The first one is this zoomed out image, where you see a broader view of the city street and more people. After that, we have the second image for the image reference, where I have the close-up shot of the character in this image. What I did was use reference image one and reference image two for the start and end frames in the first sampling. Here, you'll need to do some testing and use some imagination. In this sampling, you'll have the camera push in. It's something similar to the crash zoom in Laura, where they demonstrated it like this. The thing is, as I've said, it's unable to control the face and details if you're just using image to video. Meanwhile, right now I have flux context and we can fully control the start and end frames, how they look in the camera motions and how the character's face art looks. Because I've tried a few times using image to video with the camera crash zoom in and I got some pretty bad examples to show. By only using image to video with the camera crash zoom in, or the camera push in LoRa, both have very similar generated results. For instance, I have something like this. It's normal for the first frame at zero seconds. But when I play this, you'll see something that looks like Halloween right now, where you see this ghost popping up with this face. It's unable to control this turning into an ugly woman. The next test I did was using the camera push in LoRa with this new LoRa here. I generated something like this video. Again, the first frame is normal it follows what I input. Then suddenly it pushes in and you see something blurry that looks like not a man, but something like a man's face with a woman's hair standing in front of you. Well, this is a bad example, but it's good to show. Just to let you guys have a clear idea of what to expect throughout the testing, you don't always get good results with image to video as you've experienced. You have to do a lucky draw here with different seed numbers and different text prompts to try to get good results and hopefully generate perfect motions throughout that five or three seconds in the image to video. So this isn't ideal for a real production level way of creating videos. Therefore, I prefer using the first and last frame method right now. Wan Video Vase is also able to do image to video features, so why not just use Wan Video Vase to do that and continue with the second sampling part? I can stitch my last frames together and produce something like this, where it starts getting the camera close up shot. Then, I start doing simple text prompts 
just telling the AI to do a tracking shot of the woman walking. It's very basic text prompting. I don't need to spend more time writing them. Instead, I focus more on my creativity in my mind, thinking about what's coming up next and how I want the camera to move with different flux context images that I can combine into this workflow. Then in the third part, which is here, we've got the camera zooming out again after that camera rotation on the side of the face. This is going back to Juan Vase here, where I've continued the last part of part two of the video. But then I'm using the first image of my reference videos as the end frame, which means I'm using this image here, my first reference image. Although the face isn't really detailed and something isn't detailed here, you get the idea of how it's supposed to work. What I'm using here is based on that zoomed out image from Flux Context, and I'm able to easily produce something where the camera pushes out. From the two authors who created the LoRa, I don't even see that they spent hours training a camera push out LoRa motion. So, is it really necessary in AI models to train LoRa's when we have Vase for flexibility in video customization? You guys can do your own adjustments and evaluate how you want to use that AI video. For my preference, I like the flexibility of Juan Video Vase. Therefore, I'm just using this similar format of control video. Then, in the last part here, I just let the AI handle the walking motions and I haven't connected anything at the end frames. So from part three of the video, I got this overlap image and brought this overlap image to Juan Video Space as the start image list. As you can see, I disconnected this one and instructed the AI that the woman is walking in the city. Therefore, it's really able to help me do what I want here. From the far shot starting frame, the woman starts walking again this is the full video view of how this whole generation stitches back together with all four sampling steps, generated images, and video. We have this 12 second video generation as the final result. As you can see, it has pretty dynamic camera motions and was able to do it without any additional LoRa model, just based on creativity using Flux Context. I'm using only this image of the close up shot of the character. I generated this image before in a previous tutorial. And this is what I just brought to generate so many motions within that 12 seconds of video, starting with this close-up shot of the image. You can use some creativity yourself and use Flux Context to basically create the far shot of this image scene. There, I have two images that can be used together, controlling the camera motions, the distance zoom in and zoom out of the main character in this video scene. This is how I did it with the whole camera motions being more controllable. It doesn't have those weird effects we see in the image to video method like this, where applying the LoRa model results in uncontrollable faces, fingers pointing randomly at people on the beach, or blood coming out of fingers, which I don't know why happened, but it's just like that. I've seen a lot of sharing of this kind of camera motion LoRa on the internet, so I wanted to test it out in this video. You guys can evaluate whether you like the image to video with LoRa models to generate or if you want something more controllable with image generation like Flux Context using multi-frames for your AI video generation. That's what I wanted to show, just some different method to play with AI video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya!